TA, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Saga Asimaram writes, you said it. We stink. It's sad how the level of play gap is so blatant between our games and the actual good teams. Chances next week are slim to none. Facts. And I did say it today. I hate that I said it, but it's it's true. It, it and you know when the fus- the frustration really seeps seeps in when you think about what this defense was supposed to be and what this defense truly is. Because it, as frustrated as I was with Taylor Heineke's play today, I, I've said this before. We weren't supposed to be leaning on whomever was at quarterback, whether it was Ryan Fitzpatrick, Taylor Heineke, or Kyle Allen. We weren't supposed to be relying on that guy to have to score 30-plus every single week for us to win ball games. That was never supposed to be the plan going into the season, and that's not supposed to be the plan now, even though we realize the defense stinks. This defense has been a major disappointment. I can't remember the last time I've been duped like this with this team because I always know better. I always know better. So I always put up my guard. I always tell you guys, hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. Expect the worst. Normally, I set the bar for myself. I set the bar extremely high. I'm going to die trying to hit it. For this football team and my expectations, I set the bar extremely low. And if we hit it, I feel like we hit a milestone. And then as we proceed and they show me that they deserve to have the bar raised, then I elevate it. This year, I set the bar high for the defense. Now, I wasn't talking top five like a lot of people out there. But I thought this defense would be really good. They would keep us in ball games and they would give us a chance. This defense... I, I, I'm I not going to lie to you. I don't watch ESPN. I don't watch NFL Network. I don't watch Fox Sports 1 or any of these shows. So I didn't really buy into all of that stuff. But you hear it, though. Other people bring it to my doorstep. People, I'm in my Washington football team bubble, and we're hyping each other up, and you look at this defense, and you see the, the changes that were made, and you feel like, on paper, we're better. And then you hear everybody talking about this defense and how good it is and how Washington could be the biggest challenger to the Buccaneers in the NFC because of this defense. And Ryan Fitzpatrick is going to give them a chance coupled with that ferocious Washington defense. And I bought that shit hook, line, and sinker. Not the part about challenging the Buccaneers. Not that shit. That was bogus. Just the defensive part, that this defense, with all of these first-round picks, with William Jackson III being added at cornerback, with Kendall Fuller, with, with Landon Collins coming back, year two of Cam Curl, year two of Chase Young, year three of Montez Sweat, with getting Matt Ioannidis back, how big is that? I bought into it hook, line, and sinker. And then you watch week one and you say, huh, that wasn't the start I was expecting. But you say, okay, it's week one. Justin Herbert made some throws, man. You know, you make yourself feel better about that. Man, we got to be better. It's week one. We'll be fine. We got the Giants. They were awful in week one. We should really take it to the Giants. I mean, really put the screws to those boys. And then Daniel Jones comes out firing BBs and they go right down the field. And that's two weeks in a row we gave up an opening possession touchdown. And you're saying, what the fuck is going on? But then you settle in. You sack Daniel Jones a couple of times. You start to put pressure on him. You start to hit him. And you're like, okay, this is more like it. You take a lead to going into halftime. It's only 13 and 10. So you're feeling good. You're like, yeah, yeah, this is what it's supposed to feel like. It's what it's supposed to look like. It's 14, 10, something like that. And then you don't get a single stop in the second half until the final possession of the game. And you go, second to last, I should say. And then you go, where the hell do they do that at when you play elite defense? 
When does that happen? When does a team have five straight scoring possessions? You're like, well, we won. But damn, this defense is starting to become a little alarming. And then you go to week three and you say, hey, this is a test. You got Ron talking about this is a litmus test and it's a it's a measuring stick game. You got Chase Young talking about how much weight we carrying. And we go to Buffalo and we blink twice and it's 21 to nothing. And we are getting our asses obliterated. Now, we fought like hell to cut it to seven, but we ultimately look up and and, and Josh Allen is key keying on the sidelines with five minutes left in the ball game, chumming it up with teammates because he's done for the day. Treating this shit like a damn preseason game on our ass. And you ask yourself, how did we get here? Then you look the next week, you say, hey, we got Atlanta, man. They averaging 16 points a game. They can't score on nobody. The Giants had those boys in the fourth quarter with six points on the scoreboard. They can't bust a damn great offensively. This should be the game. This is the one. All these other quarterbacks we've played in the first three weeks, they got mobile quarterbacks that can move and hurt us. We got a stationary target this week. This is the week we turn shit around. Right here. Falcons, they stay. Oh, really? Now do they? Hmm, interesting. Then you get a 30 spot put on your head. Now you win the game, just like against the Giants. But that's when I've realized this defense don't have it. They're not good. This defense is awful. So that's a bitter pill to swallow. When you go into the season thinking, knowing that your defense is supposed to be good, and that's one of the groups you're going to be able to rely on, if nothing else. We had no idea what this offense was going to be like. They had no idea if special teams was going to ever come to the party. They never do. We invite them all the time, but they rarely show up. We've even got special teams contributions this year. The defense has been absent every single week. I can't think of a time where I bought into something, some aspect of the team, this much. And I should know better. We've had the no-fly zone. What was the, the, the stupid ass secondary name with with uh with uh Brent with not Brandon Merriweather with um DJ Swearinger? Forgot the name of that shit. You know, we we had what was the name of the, the, the D line? We had all these stupid ass nicknames that we came up with. People came up with. This this one, this one, this one takes the cake, man. Thank you for the super chat, TA. Big money, Sonny. Thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Uh, double up. Uh, uh, thank you for doubling up, big money, Sonny. Greatly appreciate you. Who writes? You're right, Lou. We got bamboozled again. We did. We got sold a bill of goods. And generally. I'm the guy that is quick to tell you, now nah, I'm good. You know, when you, you make eye contact with that person that's trying to hawk off some stuff, that's trying to sell some hot merchandise, you know when you make eye contact, shit, he coming over here. But I'm, I'm the dude that's quick to tell you, nah, bro, I'm good. I'm good. Appreciate you, I'm good. I look you dead in your eyes. I'm walking past a, a kiosk in the mall. And they dying for you to make eye contact so they could try to get you to try their product. No, nah, I'm good. I'll tell you real quick. No, nah, I'm good. Thanks. And not even break stride. No, nah, I got a little something for you here, bro. No, nah, I'm good. Hey, hey, bro, you got on some dope foams. Hey, let me clean those for you. Let me show you our product. No, nah, I'm good. Don't even break stride. But I actually stopped this year. Normally when they try to sell me some shit with this team, I normally don't break stride. Now nah, I'm good. <laughs> I know better. Been doing this for over 30 years. I'm good. I actually stopped and let them sell me on this damn defense this year. I sat there and I sucked that shit up. I soaked it up and I actually bought some of the shit. 
Now I got buyer's remorse. Yeah, we got bamboozled again. But I feel even worse because normally I keep my guards up. I'm not usually like Deontay Wilder. My shit ain't down. I ain't catching blows. I usually got my shit up here. I'm like Floyd with mine, man. Got this shell defense. You ain't hitting me because I know better. I'm rolling with the punches. I put my shit down, man. And they got me with the one, two. And now I'm on the canvas like Mike Tyson trying to put my mouthpiece back in my damn mouth, seeing stars wondering, how the hell did I get here? I'm discombobulated. My equilibrium's been knocked off. And I still can't figure out why the defense is so goddamn bad. So, yeah, we got bamboozled again. You're damn right we did. This one feels worse than all the others. Movie Team Network.